Ex there's a couple more seats in the front row for exhibiting artists. Do we have any more exhibiting artists? Okay. Are there any more? We have a couple more seats for exhibiting artists if they, anybody needs to sit. Okay, great. Does Teen Council have seats? Teen Council, you can sit with artists. <laughs> Teen Council, you guys can sit with the artists. Okay, great. There's a couple more seats over here. Great, okay. All right, are we all settled? Has everyone found a seat? There's a couple more seats right here, guys. Okay. Um, oh. I'm gonna speak and then I'll have you. I'll introduce you guys in a couple minutes. Okay. Wow, welcome. The room got silent quickly. I hope everyone found their seats. It looks like it. My name is Kimberly Snyder. I'm the interim executive director for New Museum Los Gatos, and I'm just so honored to be here this evening. We've been waiting an entire year for this moment to celebrate these talented exhibiting artists in this year's exhibition, Art Now, Unarmed Truth. We've got an exciting lineup of speakers that are here to honor this momentous occasion. I've been with the museum for nearly a decade and I can honestly say that each year this program gets even better. And this year is no exception. I was blown away by the quality of the artwork and the thoughtfulness of the artist statements. Thank you for submitting your work. This exhibition takes an entire community to make a reality, and I'm grateful to be surrounded by a group of individuals that knows the tremendous value of arts education. And I'd like to take a few moments to express my gratitude. First and foremost, thank you to the talented emerging artists that are sitting here before me. It takes courage and tenacity to share your artwork with the community. Your art matters. Your act of creation not only benefits yourself, but everyone you share it with. Art truly has the power to make change, and please know that you are doing important work. And a huge thank you to the teachers who dedicate countless hours nurturing these creative minds, encouraging to express their voice through their art. And thank you to the parents and the families that supported them. And last but not least, thank you to our generous sponsors. You are an esteemed group of philanthropic individuals whose support is making a significant difference right here in our county. Thank you to, and I, I'm gonna read off our sponsors, <laughs> Our founding sponsor and advocate, the Mike and Elise Parsons Art Endowment. Our premier sponsor, Badger Meter, whose ingenious water meter was created right here in Los Gatos. The National Endowment for the Arts, this is our second year receiving grant funding from them. The Borgenick Foundation, the Valley Foundation, Los Gatos Morning Rotary, the Town of Los Gatos, Saratoga Rotary, the Waite Foundation, the Silker School of Art and Design, Heritage Bank of Commerce, Penumbra, McManus Faulkner, the Flick Family, University Art, the Linda Smythe Young Artist Fund, Florence and Al Chung, Ginger Taylor McDonald, Scott LeFavor and Elizabeth Yi, Deborah and Marty Johnson, and our friends at KCAT TV 15 who are streaming this program live right now. Many of you have been avid supporters of this program for years. Truly, thank you. And now, we're honored to have the Muwekma Ohlone tribe of the San Francisco Bay Area start this program with a land acknowledgement. 
NUMU has partnered with San Jose Student University and the Muwekma Ohlone on the exhibition Reclamation, Resilience of the Muwekma Ohlone Tribe. This is the last weekend this exhibition is on view, so after you check out Art Now, please sure to check out this lovely show. And I'd like to welcome them on stage now. Thank you. 
Thank you for giving us the land acknowledgement. Well, our next speaker. All right. So while this program serves the entire county of Santa Clara, we'd like to give you a warm welcome to the town of Los Gatos. Um, here to welcome you is Vice Mayor Mary Badame. Welcome to Los Gatos, everybody. It's great to see you here. Um, Art Now, UMU's annual Santa Clara County High School juried exhibition program is in its 12th year. We received 800 submissions from Palo Alto to Gilroy, and 83 artists are represented in this year's exhibition. This year's theme was Unarmed Truth, and the exhibits are absolutely spectacular. This program provides opportunity to encourage and inspire emerging artists letting them know that their art makes an impact and how valuable the arts are to our community. Los Gatos is proud to have such a valuable program, bringing people together from all throughout the county. So we welcome you and we look forward to the program. My team council, would you like to come up? Hi, my name is Michelle. Um, I'm members some do you want to raise your hand if you're here no okay well there's some others in the room but I've worked with a group of wonderful high school interns this year I launched the teen council last summer we had just over 30 applicants last summer and the applications opened again at the beginning of this semester and we had over 70 applicants and the teen council has been such an integral part of the program they're going to give us some highlights from the year but before they do that i'd like to just remind us all by reading the theme the artist call for this year um, just to to have us think about what inspired all of the incredible art in the exhibition what can art reveal about the truth? Art can transform, empower, and bring us together. It gives space to actively listen and to speak freely without minimizing the perspectives of others. Truth can hurt, heal, and make way for genuine self-expression. Find inspiration from leaders and social movements that have helped us understand, embody, or uphold a hidden truth as a community. Reflect on your own experience. Dive into your subconscious, your hopes and dreams to reveal something unseen. What's below your surface? And we landed on the title Unarmed Truth, inspired by the wonderful, inspiring words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. from his Nobel Prize acceptance speech. And I'd like to read that quote. He says, I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. This is why right temporarily defeated is stronger than evil triumphant. And I'm gonna pass it off to my team council. So 
As you know, this year's Art Now show is particularly exciting as it saw the introduction of our first ever teen council composed of students all representing different high schools oh, across Santa Clara County. This means that every aspect of the event from designing the exhibition layout, which was my personal favorite, to choosing the theme and promotion was all shaped through the collaborative efforts of teenagers in the community. And the dream is to establish this internship as a key feature of Art Now, paving the way for the program to be more widely accessible and relevant to teens moving forward. Unarmed Truth, the theme for this year's competition was thoroughly thought out by the teen council members and the museum staff. The whole process started at the end of last summer from the day the teen council first met up. Each of us brought in three ideas for the theme and over the next few months we compared and discussed and we were finally able to come to a unanimous decision. To further help the artists submitting to NUMU, we carefully curated a toolkit. This toolkit features different artist examples and quotes that embody the true meaning of this year's theme. This year, 200, 258 students of the 800 used the toolkit and found it helpful. And we are proud to say that our first ever toolkit was a success. Everyone has their truth to express, and that is why 800 local artists submitted for this year's prompt of unarmed truth, making 2023 a record number of a record year in terms of submissions. This raised submissions by 147% from last year, with 259 more submissions than 2022. Art provides a powerful platform for youth to stand up for what they truly believe in. As an exhibiting artist this year, working on my submission for Unarmed Truth allowed me to dig deep into my personal values and highlight what I stand for. Art Now's Unarmed Truth provided a channel for young artists across our county to express their values, concerns, hopes, and dreams for the world. Hello, my name is Rachel Ding, and I'm one of the 64 first-time exhibitors here today. We just want to thank Michelle and Jamie and all of the wonderful staff here at NUMU and all of you here today for supporting us young artists. It's incredibly honoring and it's a great pride to be here to share this very personal part of ourselves and engage with this uplifting medium with the community. This exhibit has touched the hearts of so many people. It's incredible to be a part of this family, and as the Art Now Teen Council, we are here to advocate and represent. Thank you. Thank you, Art Now Teen Council and Michelle for that lovely overview. It's such a pleasure to see the program grow each year and I'm so thrilled that this Teen Council was established. We're so proud that Art Now serves high schools from, Santa Cla or from Gilroy to Palo Alto and we've invited the Santa Clara County Supervisor, Joe Simidian, to say a few words about this year's program. Well, good afternoon. I'm County Supervisor Joe Simidian, and I have no artistic talent whatsoever. Absolutely none. So I want to ask all of the students who consider themselves student artists to raise their hand for just a moment, if you would, please. Don't, don't be shy. Go ahead. I'm gonna ask you to do it again and I'm gonna say, say it loud and say it proud. Let me see your hands if you consider yourself a student artist. Thank you, that's a little, that's good. I, I asked you to do that because I want to speak very directly to you because while I say I have absolutely no artistic talent, you, you may think that's just polite or overstatement, it's not. Oil, clay, Canvas, kiln, none of those are my thing. 
And yet, one of the classes I remember most fondly from back in the day was the art class I took with Mr. Rocky. And Mr. Rocky quickly discerned just how much talent I did not have and could not have been more encouraging. And when I asked him why I should put my time, effort, and energy into his class, he said, because this is where you'll learn to be creative. This is where you'll learn to be innovative. This is where you will learn to think in ways that are different, to imagine and see things that you haven't imagined and seen before. And that is a set of skills you will carry throughout your life, whatever it is you choose to do. Whether you become a professional artist, which I was not destined to do, whether you become a professional artist, which many of you are destined to do, whether you make art your passion for the rest of your lives, or simply become more capable of appreciating what you see and experience, that time, that effort, that engagement will stand you in good stead throughout the rest of your lives. And it is a gift that you not only get, but will be able to share with others. So for all of you who raised your hands and self-described as student artists, I want to say congratulations, because you are very special people doing very special things that will have very special impacts in your lives year after year after year in ways you might not even be able to imagine today. And when you fault yourself as not good enough, let that go. I wasn't even in the ballpark. And I found other ways to let my creativity, my innovation be realized, made tangible. You all will do that. Now, the other thing Mr. Rocky told me, and you know, I remember him because uh, back in the day, it was not appropriate for public school teachers to have big handlebar mustaches, which he did. He also said, this is a way you can give voice. And as you can tell, perhaps, all these years later, I'm comfortable with the spoken word. I'm also comfortable with the written word. I am not, as I said, comfortable with oil or clay. Some of you are not comfortable with the written word and the spoken word. I know that from the conversations we've had. But I also know that you have found a way to give voice to your thoughts, your feelings, and your values. So to every arts educator who's out there, who every, to every parent, who wonders whether or not this is a good use of their kids' time and talent and energies, to every one of you who might think you're not quite good enough, what I want to say is stay with it. Thank you for your engagement because you will be giving us gifts that you cannot see today but that we will benefit from year after year, decade after decade, generation after generation. Your voice, your creativity is what will make the county that I am privileged to represent a better, more inclusive place in the years to come. Thank you for including me and thank you for what you're doing and congratulations. Thank you so much, Joe. It's so wonderful to have the district here recognizing the value of the Art Now program as an educational resource and the incredible talent and impactful voices of all of our exhibiting artists. So I'd like to introduce our judges for this year. Every single year we have a panel of wonderful, dedicated, insightful judges who meet the night before the exhibition opens to consult and have heated debate on who should win the awards. And these judges are practicing artists themselves and educators often at the post-secondary level within this county. And this year we had Kathy Aoki, James Morgan, 
Mitra Fabian, Rupi C. Tut, and Bin Don, some of whom have exhibited at the museum and other exhibitions. So representing our wonderful judges panel this evening, we are joined by Kathy Aoki and Mitra Fabian, who will share a few words about their experience as judges for the past few years and share some words of encouragement to all of you. Hi, I'm Kathy Aoki. I'm Mitra Fabian. And I just want to thank all of the students, teachers, um, parents, program supporters, and museum staff, because it's really a privilege for us to be able to judge this work. It's, it's really um, a wonderful experience. Mitra and I have both done it more than once. And every time, it's just the work is really amazing. And the dialogue is extremely lively when we try to make our decisions. It's tough. Um, this year, the process began online, so we were given digital images of everyone's work, and then we come in for like a big meeting um, that's many hours to, to see the work in person and, and, and do the best we can to make those decisions. And as you can see um, from the list, perhaps we're varied um, in our disciplines of what we know. So Mitra, for example, is a sculptor that works in many media, including ceramics. Um, James Morgan is a digital and I would say conceptual artist. Bin Don is a photographer that works in like historically analog traditions like daguerreotype as well as digital. And Rupi C. Tut um, is a painter that also brings to her practice um, a traditional like pigment grinding and application process. And I come from a printmaking background that has expanded into conceptual work and then like actually many disciplines. So we come from all these different backgrounds and we need to coalesce together to really decide on just a small handful of prizes that we're able to give out. So um, it's tough. And what happens is everyone thinks they know after the digital round, like, oh, we have pieces in mind, and, we can, and everything just gets completely upended. And in fact, um, James Morgan, one of the judges, says that's what he loves. He's like, I'd love to come to this discussion and have my mind changed by listening to the other perspectives of the judges. Um, so we really do the best we can. We're reading your statements. Um, we're th considering the media, the ambition, the theme. And Mitra, do you want to say something about the caliber of the work? Thanks, Kathy. Um, yes, I do. And I just want to commend all of you for putting your artwork out there. Uh, as it has been said, the quality is really outstanding. And it is... Um, it, it's just, it kind of blows my mind, actually, to see the caliber of work coming out of all of you and the honesty um, and, and efforts that you all put into it. And it's, I, uh, I don't know, I'd be thrilled to have any of you as my students. <laughs> uh, we did remark on the theme. It was um, an exceptional and like rare opportunity for that theme to bring out both personal and universal truths that high schoolers are dealing with, like with their minds and their bodies and their hearts. And these are some really challenging issues. And it was, uh, again, like a privilege for you to share that with us. And we really appreciate all of your thoughts and visions. And um, I'd just like to close by saying thank you again for all your hard work and that we can see that the, the future of art making and creativity is very bright. So thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy and Mitra. I'm now going to bring up Shaka Campbell, who is our very own Santa Clara County Poet Laureate. I'm so excited. And Shaka wrote a poem inspired by the exhibition and all of your artwork. So please give him a warm welcome. Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone? Really? Hello, how is everyone? Okay, that's a lot better. All right, so um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say a couple of words before I go into, into the poem that I wrote. Um, you know, I, I, I often wonder, you know, what's, what's the future? I, I'm, I'm a father of a, of a 13 year old. And so I'm always wondering about sort of what the world is going to look like and, um, and concerned, not only just for 
her, but you know, in, in sort of my field in, in art. And I gotta tell you, when Michelle sent me over the, the images, I was blown away. And right away I said to myself, I have nothing to worry about. Like we, we are good. Art, art is good. Um, so look, just, uh, I know there are parents in the room, there are teachers, et cetera, et cetera, but I wanna talk to, you're not important right now. I wanna talk to, uh, to the artists. Look, I, um, I do workshops. And in my workshops, I talk about the fact that it's a, you know, the relationship with, with art and writing and spoken word. And, and the way I look at the world is like this. It's a simple equation for me. Like, we know that this is a table because we call it a table. We know you're sitting on chairs because we, we call it a chair, right? You know, you're walking on the carpet. We call it a carpet. And as poets, we own words, right? We can manipulate them. We can turn them. We can make them whatever we want. So if that's the case, and words define the world that we live in, and as artists, we own words, we can control the world we live in. Simple equation. So when you think about it with words, you also, it's the same thing when you're, when you're looking at visual. You know, we understand our environment through, you know, for the most part, what we, what we see and what we sort of engage with. So know that the work you're doing, you are able to change the world with the work you're doing. And I'm not, I, just, I don't say that lightly. You know, I was, I, it was in some cases, looking through the work, I was, I was brought to tears. Like you, you can change the world with the art that you're producing. If there's anything to walk away with, uh, know that. Um, and even if you, uh, um, uh, uh, Joe, I think it is Joe, yes, uh, mentioned, you know, no matter where you go in life, this is going to be important. I, I run marketing for an ed tech company. And so, you know, how does, that, how does that play into what I do from an art perspective? Ideally, I'm a, I'm a storyteller. And what better way to do marketing than to tell stories? So whatever you, you, you de determine you want to do with your life, if it's not just art, um, know that, that you can bring that kind of creative creativity and that kind of inspiration into whatever you choose to do. You're, you're amazing. You are absolutely amazing. All right, enough of that, enough of that. Let's go into the poem. Um, so I, I picked a poem by, I'm sorry, not a poem, I, I, I picked an image, I got blown away from this, by Alicia, now, and, and pardon me if I'm not pronouncing the last name right, I wanna say Zhao. Um, um, her piece is called uh, Cold Air, Warm Hands, and when you see the image, it's upstairs in, sort of uh, is animated, when you see it upstairs, uh, the image shows hands coming in and sort of ripping the paper and then you see what's on the, on, on the inside. And so um, in that, I decided to start off the poem with what we call uh, found poetry, which is basically you use blackout to find another poem within a poem. Um, it just seemed apropos, so that's the, they, they weren't mistakes, that was just, that was on purpose. All right, so within that it goes, on paper, high school often displays our secret. So the pains being of destruction oftentimes see every layer of myself stripped and unarmed. So we are made into cannibals, burying hearts and forced to feed on ourselves to find our own God. It is why we tear through the small of our backs to break the expanse and attach wings to our tongues, to taste how the world seasons its storied heavens in the same way we learn how to find ourselves in the escape. It is why silhouettes can never be alone as they are running from their light. It is why the ocean workshops the sand into its own design and back again to itself. It's why there is so much untouched desire that folds into our devouring. So I say, I say, if I am to be as black as the soul I think they say I am, then I want to pull the wish out of the break my shoulders created to swallow the hope stuck in its seams, to push, to push till uncoupled, till we are together breath and seraph in perfect contrast to the ache and vanquish till the inhale is sweetened from the melting lick of our body pulled from its soul, like twin souls dueling against the hate of their own bottomless mouths, 
I want every beautiful we claim to be as weightless as a shadow sitting in silence and waiting to see that it is our own reflection accepting that there is nowhere to go to heal unless, unless back into the whole of ourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was absolutely beautiful, thank you. For the past four years, the museum has been honored to partner with the Silker School of Art and Design at West Valley College. This year, we're excited to offer professional development workshops and a two-year educational scholarship. Please welcome Dean of the Silker School Art and Design, Shannon Price, to announce this year's award recipient. if I was just supposed to come up here and announce it or if I got to say a couple things. Um, I don't want to take too much time, but I do want to um, thank you all for all your hard work and the submissions. It's really amazing to see sort of the next gen, and I hope to see some of you guys at West Valley College. Um, West Valley has um, made a unique dedication to the art and design. We're one of the few community colleges in California, or one of two that's accredited by NASAD. And um, we have a sort of unprecedented <laughs> amount of resources being um, put to art and design. We have a brand new visual art building, completely new state of the art, like brings tears to Mitra and my <laughs> eyes every time we go in it, building. So I would be thrilled if I had been an art student um, to, to walk into a place like that. And so I'm um, excited, especially for this scholarship, um, because um, it means that this will be the first class of students that graduate from this beautiful new building. So it's an incredibly unique opportunity to get a very white building, very dirty, <laughs> and um, and make some great art. So I'm I'm thrilled. I love this collaboration that we do with Numu. Um, I think the the high school competition is just a great idea, and it brings so much new vision every year. It's always sort of new and exciting, and you never know what you're going to get. So it's just been fun for us. Um, so the scholarship. Then we're going to be doing this every year. It's a two-year scholarship. Um, to be used towards a certificate or an associate's degree in any of the disciplines um, in the Silker School of Art and Design, which includes visual arts, all the design disciplines, and all the performing arts disciplines. So um, this year's scholarship, and I really hope I'm pronouncing the name right, it's Akemi Marcotte. Is she here? Is Akemi here? Is Akemi here? <laughs> there she is. <laughs> I was like <laughs> It's very nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so this is the moment we've all been waiting for, the awards portion of the show. So our friends from the Los Gatos Morning Rotary, who have supported the uh, show, I think for the past 10 years, maybe the whole time, are coming and they are going to announce the award recipients. And each award is a cash prize and a gift certificate to University Art. Um, so here is Carol Waite to announce the winners and Lynn Brown. And when your name is announced, please stay uh, at the front until everyone in your category has been called. And we'll save applause till the end of each category. No, we won't. We won't save applause. <laughs> but you still have to stay up here. <laughs> so thank you all. Thank you for having us. And some of you are probably wondering why Los Gatos Morning Rodeo is up here handing out rewards. 
And that's because both Carol and I and most of the people in the Rotary have been involved with Art Now almost from the earliest, earliest days and have watched it grow with great delight. And it is always a pleasure when we're invited to give the awards and we know that you are ready to go. So Carl is going to give them and announce the winners and I will hand you the certificate. Carol. Okay, let, let's just get right into this. So um, the first section, uh, medium, is digital art, and that is sponsored by Badger Meter, Inc., which is, as she said, is right here in Los Gatos. So the Judges Recognition Award, and as I go through here, please forgive me if I mispronounce your name. I'm, but the, the Judges Recognition Award is for Yokuyo Gua. From Los Gatos High School, grade 10, and an instructor is Christine Ahn. And if you're here, please come up. No? Okay. Second place is Sanvi Kumar from Westmont High School, grade 12, instructor Amanda Borges. First place for digital art is Cynthia Wang. From Los Gatos High School, grade 11, instructor Alex Chet. Well, that's, no, that's it. <laughs> so the nec next we have drawing. Um, and the judge's recognition for drawing is Erica Turva from Los Gatos High School. Grade 11, instructor Alex Chuck. Uh, oops, no, no, but that was for first place. So Los Altos High School, grade 10, instructor Christine on again. Second place is Stella Walker from Westmont High School. Grade 11, instructor Amon, Amanda Borges. And first place in drawing is Liam Mathiason from Los Gatos High School. Grade 12, instructor Mark Yanowski. That's it, thank you. Next is Mixed Media. The Judges Recognition Award is for Alina Wang from Los Altos High School, grade 11, instructor Christine Ahn. Second place, Arlie Lowe. From Lee High School, grade 12, instructor Kimberly Bartell. And first place is Sarah Eng from Los Altos High School, grade 10, instructor Christine Ahn. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. So next is painting, and this is sponsored by the Linda Smythe Young Artist Fund. The judge's recognition goes to Abigail Kiefel from Pioneer High School, grade 12, instructor Lori Kerr. Second place is Olivia Moon from Los Altos High School. Grade 10, instructor Christine Ahn. And first place with painting, it goes to Larry Kane from Pioneer High School, instructor Lori Kurt. Thank you all and congratulations. Thanks. Next is photography. The judge's recognition goes to Amna Jafar from Westmount High School. Instructor Rachel Bradley. Second place is Alina Angulo, Angulo um, from Independence High School. Instructor John Bischoffberger. And first place goes to Ankhil Ankbayer from Los Altos High School. Instructor Jessica Hayes. Nope. Thank, congratulations. 
Okay, um, now we have printmaking. The judge's recognition goes to Desiree Vude Leon from Leyland High School, instructor Stacy Rapaport. Second place, Audrey Zhao from Los Altos High School, instructor Christine Ahn. First place for printmaking goes to Annabelle Yo from Valley Christian High School, instructor Karen DeCunt. De Okay, thank you, and congratulations. Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> congratulations. Okay, next, sculpture. The judge's recognition goes to Claire Campmeyer, the Harker School instructor, Brian Capone. Second place goes to Catherine Wright from Los Gatos High School, instructor Augustine Matsui. First place in sculpture goes to Emily Chang from Valley Christian High School, instructor Karen DeQuine. So next, video animation. The judge's recognition goes to Nicole Park, from Los Altos High School, <laughs> instructor Yu San Chai. Second place, Christine Rayu from Castilea High School, instructor Audrey Brown. And first place under video animation goes to Sydney Chandler. from Los Gatos High School, Mark Kanowski. And that's it, thank you very much. Congratulations to all of you. Hello, again, <laughs> so now. I did it. Oh, apparently I turned the mic off, sorry. The suspense is building. Okay, it'll take a moment. Ellie Lynn. So much back and forth, getting my steps in. Okay, so I would like to introduce Mike Parsons. Mike Parsons has been here since the inception of Art Now in 2012, and even before then. He has been an avid supporter and advocate of this program and has underwritten the Best in Show scholarship of $5,000 since 2012. It's been awarded to 11 deserving emerging artists, and many of them have gone on to pursue artistic endeavors and intended universities such as the Rhode Island School of Design, UC Berkeley, Cal Poly, UCLA, and many more. Without further ado, I welcome Mike Parsons to announce this year's Best in Show Award recipient. <laughs> In preparation for this, I uh, went back over my 12-year collection of, of catalogs for this, this event. 
And um, I kept uh, remembering some of the outstanding pieces. And I noticed that there were some teachers that were consistently had multiple students winning prizes. You noticed that tonight, I'm sure, seeing some teachers' names many times. Each of these teachers had over 30 students. Oh, names like Bartell, Matsui, Cunningham, and Rappaport, and there's many others. That's a few. Each of these teachers had over 30 students during the show over their years. But there was one teacher that I counted had over 80 students that were juried into this show during the last 10 years. An incredible accomplishment for that teacher. And that teacher is, of course, Christine Ahn. Thank you, Christine, for your dedication to this program. So it's no surprise that tonight's winner for this Best of Show is one of Christine's students. So the Best of Show prize and the Parsons $5,000 scholarship goes to, drum roll, Ellie Lynn. Come back up, Ellie. And one of the items that we started doing for the past two years is we have our previous year's Best in Show send a message to all of you. So in 2022, Gina Bay won the $5,000 school uh, scholarship and now she's at the Rhode Island School of Design. So she's prepared a few words and a short video for you all that we will play now. Hi. Oh. <laughs> I'm Gina Bay. I was... Hi, I'm Gina Bay. I was Art Now's Best in Show recipient last year. Shout out to everyone who's here tonight. I'm sure you all put in a lot of hard work and effort into your pieces this year. And congratulations. Thank you for your patience. Have you got her? Hi. I'm Gina Bay. I was Art Now's Best in Show recipient last year. Shout out to everyone who's here tonight. I'm sure you all put in a lot of hard work and effort into your pieces this year. And congratulations to this year's recipient as well. First of all, I'm really grateful to Art Now. It has had a really big impact on my life. I only found out about Art Now in my senior year, but I wish I had known about it sooner. Winning Best in Show was an amazing push forward, especially considering the fact that I had only decided to pursue art professionally in the middle of college off season. <laughs> it also really validated my decision to go into art and was a great financial help in funding my college tuition. Now, I'm finishing up my freshman year at the Rhode Island School of Design and just declared my major in illustration. Thank you to New Museum Los Gatos and Art Now for kickstarting my venture into gallery spaces. <laughs> I've been able to display more of my work this year and it was super fun to learn more about the gallery process. In terms of advice to this year's exhibiting artists, as cliche as this is, I just recommend staying true to your passion and doing what makes you happy. Bay Area hosts a lot of highly competitive STEM-centric school districts and that definitely put a damper on my personal development as an artist. If you're confident in your ability to put in the time and effort into making a career in art, go for it. And if a more stable career path would bring you more happiness, or if you don't want to turn your passion to a job, just find ways to squeeze art into your daily life, even as a hobby. I just recommend trying to keep the arts present in your life. Most of all, take care of yourself. High school can be very stressful, but it will be over soon, and it is not everything. Sleep well, eat properly, spend some time with loved ones, and don't use oil paint in poorly ventilated areas. Anyways, you should all be very proud of yourselves. Celebrate yourselves tonight, and best of luck in the future. Bye! Well, that was just wonderful. Um, so we have one more speaker tonight. What would the museum be without a supportive board? And here to say some closing remarks is our board president, Jan Schwartz. Uh, 
I think everything that could be said was just said. That was just amazing, and I expect some, something like that from you guys as you go on. Remember us and call back. This is terrific. Um, I did, I'm the last speaker, so you're almost done. I just want to take a moment to just enjoy what we have here. Look around and celebrate these terrific students. I mean, their talent, their thoughtfulness, their creativity. You guys are great, and we're so happy that you're here. Um, thank you. Thanks. And there's so many people to thank for what we have here today, the students, the teachers who encouraged them, the parents who have supported them. But this exhibit was made possible by the incredible New Mew staff. Please, staff, raise your hands. You. <laughs> OK, guys. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of staff here. <laughs> yeah. The, the staff has worked with the schools, the teachers, the jurors. They created the teen council, did an amazing job reaching out to county schools, the whole county, publicizing the opportunity, and highlighting the exhibit on social media. So your work has been out there in the world. It's been great. The challenge of collecting, hanging, and organizing the work of 87 students to give every individual the space and recognition is amazing. There's a lot of work that went into creating the exhibit that we all walk around and look at upstairs. Try and take those pieces and organize them, which the Teen Council did, and fit them into an exhibit so you can enjoy every one. We're thrilled to have representatives here from the county, Joe Simidian, and the town of Los Gatos, Mary Badame. Students, you're having a wide-ranging impact. You're famous beyond Los Gatos, in Los Gatos and beyond. Above all, I want to thank our sponsors, but Kim did a great job of that. I just wanted to mention Mike and Elise Parsons again, because they created this program, and it wouldn't have happened without them. Their inspiration and initiative set in motion a tsunami. And here we are. Really, it is. I hope all of you will become supporters, if you're not already. Join the museum, donate, and ensure that this incredibly valuable program continues to grow, thrive, and inspire the students of the future. Thank you. It's me again. So I just wanted to point out, too, that this year, California State Assembly member Gail Pellerin produced the certificates that the award winners received tonight. So we're receiving recognition on a local and state level. So that, that's very meaningful. I'd also like to mention that the catalogs will be available for pickup during Artwork Pickup Weekend. All exhibiting artists and their teachers receive a complimentary catalog. What was the other thing? Oh, yes. And the most important thing that we're just getting into, which is the after party, I'd like to introduce Priya from Mosaic America, the co-founder, who will talk about what's going on a little later in the next, like, 10 minutes. <laughs> So you were with Kim for an hour. You're going to be with me for three hours. So buckle in. Uh, not here, upstairs. But I want to kind of set the context a little bit uh, for, so we are here to celebrate our truth, right? Uh, and we have been for the last few weeks. But what is our truth as a society? Here we are in the most innovative place on Earth, Silicon Valley. And as a society, we simply do not know how to be together. We do not know how to come together as a community. Right? And that is what Mosaic America does. We, does. we try to figure out ways and means by which we can break the silos and the labeling that we've put ourselves into, that we were schooled into, and break open all of the barriers that hold us back from being a community. Right? So let's look at our truths today. Our ancestors did not get along. That is a truth. It doesn't have to be our truth. We are the products, some of us are the products of slavery, some of us are the product of coercion, some of us are the product of choices we made, right? Some of us had to shed every bit of our history, identity, and culture to be American. 
Most of us don't know how to do that anymore, shed any more of our identity, history, or culture, right? So let us, for the next three hours, show the rest of the world how this gathering can celebrate our truths and yet come together as one community. Join us, join Mosaic America and these fantastic artists. This is just one culture, the Pan-African culture that you see here before us, and they will lead us from this room upstairs into the light, if you give me some poetic license, into the light. And let's come together <laughs> as a community for the next six, for the next three hours celebrating. <laughs> well, you know, you're welcome to stay here, right? For six hours. <laughs> we have a beautiful combination of a representation of our neighborhood. We have opera outdoors. We have uh, classical, modern, evocative, contemporary dancing outdoors. We have South American music outdoors. We have South American dance outdoors. We have Mexican folklorico. This is not, these are cultures that have come from other countries, yes. But these are our, are our neighbors. This is our neighborhood. We are the community, so let's just show everybody how to come together as one community. And now to lead us into this gathering and into the light uh, is the Nubian Soul team. We have Mike Fair, we have Julia Bowles, Kalila Ramirez, and Leon Beachman. All right, Mike. <laughs>